So molecular engineering is, like maybe Six Sigma is, a set of concepts and techniques to achieve a specific goal, right? And for us, the goal is about knowledge in the flow of work in the way that knowledge is going to influence your engineering outcomes. Okay, that's really what molecular engineering is about. That is related to this product, which I think is really cool, called Oros, sold by Oral Solar Systems, uh, that is a set of technologies, specific technologies that promote these ideas. Because none of them hit the middle bit. None of them hit assessments. Can I assess against the knowledge I have? Can I assess against the requirements? Can I put it in the workflow of what I'm doing? You know, so it was very apparent to us. And this slide itself really sold to everybody that was pushing the other systems that those do not solve a problem. And this one does. So this is what really drove us down to settle on orals. Um, implementation, we want to ask one final question. Based on what you have just done through this pilot, would you say we should proceed? And we got 100% yes on that score going forward. So good results, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hoffa. So good results on the Orioles from a keep going standpoint. So this slide I put together, and I, I found it a lot of similarity what was presented yesterday. And I guess when I see something that uh, different people do and arrive to the same conclusion, it must be right. That's, that's what I see here. This has a lot to do with the, in the work of flow slide that you guys presented yesterday, Jeff. The idea here is to apply the knowledge base uh, from start, middle, and end. I mean, we didn't want just to have a checklist at the end of the design to, to say, aha, we caught you, it's a problem. Now we have, I think, 11, as of yesterday, there were 11,000 active users. Okay. I think Christine told me there's 16,500 registered users, and we have over 16,500 KPAPs already in the system. So we have lots of data. Um, we're hitting the servers pretty hard, um, and I don't see this anywhere but accelerating. I think you're going to see this curve because now that we're doing what we're going to talk about today, which is getting this integrated into NX and being our best practices decomposing something useful. So now, what's the advantage of this is, with Daryl's check, if there's an error, you don't know where it's at. We need to create a requirement check. 3 hc 3 will take you to where it's at in the geometry. Now, and and there's some, now there's some connectivity through the team center itself, because the requirement check now can cascade back to team yes. center. Yes. So what we're trying to do is use, our, again, ours is our main thing, right? Drive it all the way through an X. touched on uh, a bit of what GM is doing around the, the attributes, so we're not to the point where we're delivering these things into our CAD system to tie that in, but we are starting to think about how do we how do we feed this information out. So we align it to our phase gate timing, what phase you were in, um, the product features that matter, and some of the functional groupings so that we can start delivering that into assessments when the engineers need them um, in a fairly simple way. And that's one of the things I think so it's very clear from the beginning. If I go and talk to an engineer on my team and explain a little bit to them and say, oh yeah, I, I see how that works. And that's not very often that an engineer will say, I see how a, a new tool that I'm not using can actually be beneficial most of the time. It's run the other way, I hope I never have to use it. Um, so it's pretty easy to get that by. Everybody recognize that when you capture and apply this knowledge, it helps you catch errors, helps keep things from getting out downstream, helps focus your design reviews so you're not just kind of coming in and asking everyone, well, did you do this, did you do that? You know, you don't want to rely on the quality of the people that happen to be in the meeting at that time. And also you get the historical benefit of being able to come back and say, what did, what did we look at? What was the assessment like for that particular engineering project? Um, so for us inside of integrated product development, what this means is quality and efficiency inside of our engineering releases. You know, we can't have releases where we 
keep having repeat uh, issues that are downstream and testing at the plants, out to our customers, any of that kind of stuff. So we have, we're approaching this very much from an error reduction uh, perspective. And over time here, OROS has grown to be a, a real key tool uh, for us for engineering knowledge management as well as standard work applying it across all engineering releases. Uh, we first got this software turned on around the end of 2012, so around Halloween of 2012. Uh, Steve Weinke was helping us um, get started inside of this effort. So if you go back to the E2KS first conference that uh, my predecessor presented at, we had around 150 users, 160 KPACs, really just getting going with the tool. As you look at this thing over time, a couple of key things to point out. If you look at user growth from 150, 400, 740, 1,230, okay? That 1,230 is similar to the 1,300 I showed in terms of number of engineers inside of our integrated product development organization. The first day we went through the vignettes and we tried to expose you to a concept, a very general concept that we call knowledge aware engineering. We hope it catches on. We believe that the ideals, the ideas and the ideals of knowledge aware engineering are present and upon us.